Hello. Hello. Uh, so today, um, I think we said at the end of last week that we were going to be moving away from the version of Twine that we'd be u- we'd been using. Yeah, that was Harlow, Twine 2 Harlow. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to start looking at Snowman. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Policeman, I gave you all the codes. I have no idea what that's in reference to, but No okay. worries, no uh, worries. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be looking at Snowman, which is a different version of Twine, um, and it uses uh, JavaScript. Yes, which I'm told is the dreaded JavaScript. Yeah, JavaScript. The, lo- the, the much loathed JavaScript. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's some there's a lot of things that people don't like about JavaScript as a programming language. Most of them aren't going to be much of an issue for what we're doing good to hear uh, I like to avoid issues <laughs> um, but JavaScript is um, more of m- much more of a traditional programming language than what we've been looking at so far and it looks a bit different okay um, and one of the things that JavaScript does not come with is a built in shuffle function hmm yes uh, so given that one of the things that we need to do is shuffle a deck yeah, we get. Um, That's the first thing we need to do, <laughs> besides have a deck. How, yeah, besides have a deck. Uh, would you like to start off with writing the code for shuffling a deck, or would you like to uh, look at some of the other stuff that we had already working first? We could we can um, start off by doing something like a dice roll and um, printing the result. I'm happy or to we can so, jump right into. I'm happy to jump right into trying to figure out how to get it to shuffle because even you know that might not make as much intuitive sense as like what follows would mm. to me. But at the same time, it's like it's the first step in the process to, of the game, so I feel like it makes sense to try and do it first, even if that's not how yeah. di- digital game design works. Okay. <laughs> um. So we've got a we've got a tab open. We do. Which says how to randomize brackets shuffle. Do we have another uh, a JavaScript array. Um, so uh, we're on Stack Overflow. Um, so the question someone's asked is how, how do I randomize or shuffle an array? Uh, which is what we're going to want to do. And we're not we're going to scroll past this one. This one's got too much stuff in it, and we don't like that. <laughs> we don't like to read. <laughs> uh, this one is much shorter, and this looks a lot more manageable. Okay, cool. Um, so you can see uh, the first line says function shuffle array brackets array, and it's got a curly brace. Um, so function um, is a keyword like um, so when we before we when we were doing something codey we had the round brackets and then we had something like set colon yes and those were keywords mm. um, and they they mean a specific thing to the computer. Uh, and function is the same thing, and it means um, it means that we're we're making a piece of code that we can use again later. Okay. Basically, um, so it was called. Cool, uh, it's a similar idea to the macros mm. that we were using before. So the same way that you can use set to do the same thing each time. Yeah. Uh, you can use function. Uh, to to create a function with a name and then you can use that. So you can just use the name instead of having to type all the code every time. Yeah, exactly. That rules. Um, <laughs> I love functions. <laughs> functions are my best friend now. And um, most most um, most code um, is a pile of functions mm. uh, wearing a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't uh, we all? Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Functions and dysfunctions. <laughs> Um, and so the second bit after function is the name. Shuffle array. Uh, so this one's called shuffle array because what it's doing is shuffling an array. Uh, and you can give it any name that you want. Mm-hmm. And then you can use that every time you want to uh, do the code. Mm. So so the, the rest of the stuff after this line here um, is what will happen every time you use shuffle array. Okay. Uh, and the bit in brackets here is um is saying what variables you're giving to the array so you're saying uh, giving to the function sorry okay uh so we're saying every time that we use the function shuffle array we're going to give it one variable uh, and we're going to call that variable array um and then 
Uh, so, and then each time we call shuffle array, whatever stuff is in here is going to happen to the variable that we give it. Okay. And th this could say anything. It doesn't need to say array. It could say uh, my variable. It could say uh, oh, it's dog. just whatever name to what, yeah. identify it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So this is this is just a variable name, basically. Cool. Um, and then, um, so you'll notice the variable names don't have dollar signs in front of them anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it so for our for if we do this in R one, it will be just it's like say shuffle, but then in in the where the variable is, it will say deck because we've got the deck variable, um, or or no. Well, when we're uh, if we're writing this, um, we we could call it deck because probably the only arrays that we're going to be shuffling are decks. Mm. Um, but we could call it array or we could call it whatever. Um, it doesn't need to be called the same thing in our function definition as it does when we call it. So um, when you actually call it, the code will look so, um, yeah, so when you actually call it, you'll type out, you'll say sh um, shuffle array. Oh, hang on, sorry, there's someone at the door. There's someone at the door. There's someone at the door. Who can it be? There's someone at the door. I'm going to mute us. <laughs> Hello, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Our next door neighbours uh, got a parcel but aren't in. Uh, so, <laughs> so now I have their parcel. Um, yeah, so I think once we've um, actually got this in our code, uh, mm. it might make a bit more sense. Okay. Uh, but basically, it doesn't matter that we've called this array here, um, that, that we've called it array here. We can call this whatever. But then we can use this in several different places and it doesn't matter what we call the variable that we're passing into it. Okay. As long as it's of a type that makes sense. Okay. So if we tried to pass in, if we tried to u call this on a variable that um, that doesn't have a length, uh, so here we're going array dot length. Mm. So we're saying whatever whatever thing we give to it has to have a length. Okay. So if we try to use this function on a variable that doesn't have a length, like a, a variable that just has a number in it, Yeah. then it won't work. But other than that, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so uh, I think we can probably just uh, copy this. Okay. Um, and this will work as is? Uh, hopefully. Okay. We'll, we'll see if it does. And if not, we can uh, fix it. Okay. Uh, and then... Just at the... Do I need to put the arrow? Oh, so percent? Um, yeah. Before we paste it in, have we shown what we've got here so far? We haven't yet. So I, basically, just before we started, I typed in uh, the deck because, like, like how in the previous version at the start we had like this version where it, we could we were able to just type in shuffled, and then we have like the two item arrays for each card. Uh, here we're just able to like. I, uh, I don't know if I'm able to like explain the difference except to say that it, it like hmm no I don't know if I'm able to explain the difference okay um so this is the same idea we've still yeah. got an array called deck um that's an array of of arrays that are two items long each yeah um so rather than um doing set deck two mm. um we have uh, this is how we create variables now. We do s dot, um, and then the name of it is deck, and then equals. Yeah. Um, so rather than set to, set, rather than set deck to, we've got s dot deck equals, and then um, whatever it's equal to. Um, and then we've got these little angle brackets with the percent signs, um, and that's to tell Twine that what we've got is some JavaScript rather than something that we want to show it on the t on the screen. Fantastic. Um, so previously we'd have an open brackets and then 
something like set colon or open brackets shuffled mm. colon rather than that being how we tell time that we want it to do some programming stuff yes yeah, so it's it's almost purely the like the main difference is syntax but then also like the way the variables grow out of the s variable is I, I guess a, a different I, I don't know if it's a different idea or if it's just more transparent than how it was presented yeah, I in think, Harlow yeah I, so part part of the difference is that it's hiding less of the programming from you yeah I think Harlow is designed to um, hide as much of the programming from you as possible so you don't get scared <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get scared yeah um, and also like yeah it can just be it can be confusing um, if you've never seen like this sort of thing before mm um but no yeah it just it, it felt when i was reading it earlier like when you gave you run me through it a little bit earlier to make sure i wouldn't be taken too off guard on stream it was you know it seemed like it was a new idea mm. but then when i was like actually sitting and comparing the two i was like oh this is actually just the same thing presented differently yeah basically <laughs> it's a very similar thing it just looks quite different yeah um so yeah we've got our deck um, which is now in s dot deck, um, so and it's got the angle bracket and the percent at the start, and then the angle bracket and percent at the end. And if we type some text here, for example, go hi, hi. then this this will this will be displayed the same way as it would um, in the previous version. Yeah. Uh, and then so here you can see we've got angle bracket percent and then equals, mm. um, and that is. Um, saying that's like the run, print function. Yeah, yeah. So that's just gonna um, show us whatever whatever value uh, this the stuff in between it represents. Um, so rather so without an equals, it will try and um, it will just run it as as code. Mm. And then with the equals, it's like oh, okay, you want me to show you what? Yeah, is run in the this. code and present like what you get to. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and we've got s dot deck zero, which means uh, so this line here means um, print out or show on the screen uh, whatever value is in s dot deck zero. Mm. Um, so is zero being the first item in the yeah okay yeah cool. which is the ace of hearts uh, until <laughs> until we shuffle it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're not going to want the equals. No, yeah. Great. Thank you. And I understand why now and everything. <laughs> so just put it just put it in as a function and, and then close it off. Yeah. Um with percent and then percent close. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm not sure uh the one thing I didn't think to look up in advance was um was if was how to um was if if this function if we can only call shuffle array while we're in this passage um or if we'll be able to use this in other passages um but i think if we go look at the um documentation mm -hmm. we can look at functions not macros sweet uh snowman is not just playing macros variables provide functions and properties template code blocks functions Template code blocks. Is this what we want? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, I'm clicking on it and nothing's happening, so maybe that's not what we want. Please. <laughs> Please, no? if we ask nicely. No, not allowed. Uh, Sh As explained within the templates page. Hmm, interesting. Not allowed to look at that. Uh, user defined functions, store and access data. Uh, Events, examples, adding functionality. That's what we want to do. We want to add some functionality. Maybe they should add some functionality to the encyclopedia. Uh, Got them. Okay, so here's how we do it. So rather than here, where we do function shuffle array brackets array, mm. uh, we're going to want to do... Um, so we're going to want to do window dot setup, probably dot show. Oh, is that's what dot that's what s is short for, isn't it? Oh, uh, was that what s was short for? Yeah. I think so. I think we can do um, 
s dot shuffle array equals so we're going to want s dot shuffle array equals and then we're going to get and then we're going to do function so this is the same this is assuming this works mm. uh, this is the same way that we create a variable we say there's something attached to s and we can get to s wherever we are yeah um so and one of the things that we're keeping in s is a function that we're calling shuffle array so rather than uh, it being a rather than having like a value stored in it it's got a function stored in it mm. so hopefully um what we can now do is um so after we've created our function we should be able to do um uh s dot uh, i'll let you do the typing um so we're going to want to do s dot shuffle array yeah um and then open brackets Oh, uh, uh, which ones? Uh, the round ones. And uh, they should be uh, touching it. Um, and then we're going to give it the array that we want to shuffle, which is s.deck. And then that should hope... And then you want uh, a semicolon at the end to tell it that that's the end of the line. Sweet. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, if you copy if you copy this line here that prints out s dot deck zero, mm. then hopefully that will be a different a different value. Um, so it runs the code in order, so we'll get it twice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and um, that will want you put that in. So if you want to print it inside these, inside this area, which is the code, um, so you can I don't think you can nest the okay. um, the braces like that. So you Just can do either, it after. yeah you can do it after or you can use the print function. Uh, but that seems fine. Okay, so should we try running this and see if it actually works? <laughs> okay, that would be nice to know. Hi, Ace of Hearts. So it prints Three out of these. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, easy. Done. <laughs> easy. <laughs> um, do you want to have a look at what this function's actually doing? Uh, yeah. Or do you want to just trust that it's shuffling it? I mean, it looks like it is, but also I feel like I should be able to know what you mean when you say that. So let's yeah. have a look. Um, so if you if you go back to our function. Yes. Um, uh, close. Um, and we'll be able to use this anywhere if we need to, um, if we want to shuffle an array, if we want to shuffle our deck later on. Okay. Um, so this first line here, mm. um, that's uh, that's um, our function signature basically. Um, so we've got we're giving it the name on the left hand side, and we're saying that name means. Um, a function that we give one variable to and we're calling that variable array and if we wanted to give it more than one variable we'd put a comma and then we'd put more things so we could say like i and then uh name or what if so if we would had a more complicated uh function that was using multiple pieces of information mm. you can give it more than one piece of information at a time okay but this one just needs an array okay um, and then we've got this line here is a for loop uh, and we've used those before yes um, and this looks a bit different to our previous for loops yeah I think we can compare if you want because I've got the other tab open oh yes so um, it'll be in uh, I think either this one or a new cut uh, here here yeah so here we had for each I um, and dot 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 range one to die so we were saying this is a range of numbers from one to whatever value we rolled for die mm -hmm. and then for each value in that range each time round the loop um, we're, get, we're assigning that value to the variable i mm. um, which we could have used for something but we didn't actually use for anything in this loop we didn't use i anywhere in the loop but if we wanted to each time round print out you were at this position and we could have printed we could have gone print you are at position and then i 
and then the first time she would loop it say you're at position one the second time say you're position two and so on because i goes up each time because each time it's getting set to the next value in the range mm. um so in this one um this is this is uh, a sort of a very standard way of having a having a loop in like most programming languages so we've got our keyword for um which is something that's built into the programming language you can't change what for means mm. um and then we've got a round bracket on either side um and this is where this is where we sort of set up how we want our loop to work inside these round brackets so uh we've got four and then we've got this bit which is how our loop works uh, this bit which is how our loop works and then we've got um a curly brace here which is uh and inside these curly braces so inside this part this mm. is what happens each time we go round the loop um so the round brackets is telling us basically the conditions under the conditions for deciding if we keep going round the loop and then um this part is what we do each time round yes um so we've got uh, so this line this line here which is setting up our loop has got three parts to it mm. um uh, this part oh sorry uh, this part up to the first semicolon um is creating a variable called i so it's the same as here where we were like we've got a variable we've got a variable called i instead of it being underscore i to say we, we've got a temporary variable mm. It's just the I. We've got var, oh. which is our keyword to say we're making a variable. Mm. So that, that's how you make a variable that isn't connected back to s. Yeah, that's how you that we're basically that's what you var is sort of the keyword for creating a new variable. Yeah. Um, whereas well, s is an existing one that they've set up before we start. Yeah, yeah. But what I mean is, it's not branching off of s yeah it's 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 oh, exists standalone in this passage yeah 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 um so rather than starting off with i um being a one or a zero um we're saying we want i to be equal to the length of the array that we've given to this function mm -hmm. so however long an array that we've passed in which in our case will be 52 so we're gonna we're saying so this number will be in our case fifty two array dot length, mm. and then we're saying take one away from that, and the reason that we take one away from it is that we start counting at zero. Oh, uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so the last i this this here the last item in the in the array is at position fifty one. Yeah, yeah. So there's fifty two items in the array, but this one is at position fifty one. Okay, that makes sense. Because the first position is position zero. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is at position zero. Mm. Um, and then this one is at position 51, even though if you count them all, there's 52. Mm. Um, and uh, that's something that's very easy to forget. It's and a ground floor, first floor thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so if we'd forgotten to put this here, um, and we said var i equals array dot length. Mm. Then we'd start off by trying to look at the uh, at the value that is one past the end of the array, and it wouldn't work. Yeah. Uh, and that's called an off by one error. Okay. An off by one error is a a very common mistake to make in programming. It's <laughs> a very easy thing to forget. Um, so we've set up we've set up what we want i to be. Uh, rel uh, what value we want i to be at the start yeah so uh, this part here happens once before the loop starts um the second part after the first semicolon so in between these two semicolons um is the con is the condition for the loop to keep going mm. so we're saying as long as i is bigger than zero then we're gonna then we're gonna do what whatever's inside the loop yeah um so if our array, if our array was only length one, uh, then we'd take one away from it um, before starting. So we'd have var i equals zero, mm. and we'd go i is greater than zero. No. So if we gave this function an, 
an array of length one, mm. it wouldn't do anything. It would set i to zero. It would check if i is greater than zero. So does that mean you can't... I asked you this a minute ago, but I think I'll ask again on stream. Mm -hmm. So does, does that mean you can't draw the last card then, so to speak? If it's the last item in the array, it can't come, it can't um, come out. You could, you'd be able to take the last item oh, out sorry, of the array. Oh, sorry, I've just realised this is for the shuffle Yeah, function. this is for shuffling. Okay, yep, never mind. That's why, it, yeah, okay. Um, I get it now. Yeah. You can't shuffle. You can't shuffle one thing. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't shuffle one thing because yep. you've got nothing to shuffle it with. Um, this makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> so it checks if this is true before it goes round the loop the first time, mm -hmm. and then each time round the loop it checks. Yeah, that makes yeah perfect sense. Um, and then this last part happens. I dash dash. Um, yeah, uh, happens. Um, Every time you have, every time you have executed the code in the loop. Mm. Um, so the first time round, um, we set i to the starting value. Uh, we check if our condition is met, which it is, and then assuming that it is, uh, we execute this code once, and then we do this final part here. Mm. Uh, and then. And what is that final part? Uh, so this is a sh is a shorter way of saying I e set i to i minus one, so it takes one away from whatever value is currently in i. Okay. So if we start off with an i, e if if we start off with i being equal to fifty one, mm. um, we'd uh, so we'd have fifty one. Fifty one is greater than zero. We'd do whatever's in here, and then we'd do um, fifty one minus one is fifty. And then we'd say, is 50 still more than zero? Yeah, we do whatever's in here. And then we do 50 minus one is 49 mm. and so on. And then we'd get to, uh, when we had, we'd be, when we got to i equals two, we'd go, okay, two is greater than zero, do whatever's in here, take away one. Mm. Um, uh, one is greater than zero, do whatever's in here, take away one, um, zero, isn't greater than zero so then we don't do whatever's in here and then that's when we leave the loop uh and then we do whatever is after okay so uh for it to actually like take to take cards out of the deck then when it's shuffled like this does mm -hmm. that basically mean you have to would do like oh uh s dot shuffle arrays first but like another for another for loop for like however many you were drawing out, or uh, yeah, that would be one way uh, <laughs> to do it. Is yeah, we'll you, we'll probably use another for loop to take cards out of the deck. Cool. Um. So, whereas before we had a for loop and we were using the move macro, mm -hmm. we'll have a for loop and then we'll use um a JavaScript function that's called pop, which lets us take one value out of an array. Okay. Um, so, um, looking so now that we've looked at like how the loop actually works, uh, if we look at what's inside these curly braces, this is the part that's actually randomizing the array. Yeah. Uh, so we're creating another variable that we're calling J. Um, and then math dot random basically means give us a random number. Mm. Uh, we're multiplying it by i plus one um, and then math dot floor I think random must give you a random number hmm. I don't know yeah I don't know exactly what random number it gives you are those brackets supposed to be empty uh, yeah so uh, okay. random is a function call um, so the same as we've got our shuffle array function yeah uh, but random you don't need to give any uh, any values to okay um, and we could, if you if you look up uh, JavaScript math dot random, um, we can look at the yeah. This first result seems good. Um, re so it returns a random number in the range zero to less than one, mm. with approximately uniform distribution. Um, so. It's, yeah, so it's going to give us a random number between 0 and 1. Um, and then if you want to know what uh, math.floor does, 
uh, we can search for JavaScript math dot floor, which I assume is going to round down um, whatever number you give it to the nearest integer, to the nearest whole number. Mm. Yeah. So if you've got 5.95, it will round down to 5. If you've got 5.05, it will round down to 5. Um, if you've got minus 5, which we don't need to worry about because we don't have minus numbers. Um, so it basically makes sure you've got a whole number. Okay. Um, which is important because we're going to use that number to find... We're going to use that number to refer to a position in our array. Yeah. Uh, so if you ask it for like 5.5... That doesn't mean anything because it's not a position. That, yeah. So it needs to be flawed or sealant. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there, there probably is uh, a math dot ceiling as well. Okay. Running up. Cool. Um. So what we're doing is we're getting a random number between zero and one. Mm. Uh, we're multiplying it by um, i plus one, uh, and then we're rounding it down to get. Um, a number that we can use as a position in our array. Mm. So a semi-random number that's sort of related to where we are in the array, basically. Okay. Um, and then we take whatever value is at i. So the first time round, we'll take the first card in the array. Mm. The second time round, we'll take the second card in the array, and so on. So we'll take the card at position zero, then at position one, and position two. Oh, uh, sorry, I've just realised... Cause just being slow in my head of like picking things up, I've just been like, oh, like picking a number between zero and one. It's basically being like, what percentage along in the array should we take one out of, and then flooring it to one that there's actually something you can pick up. I, yeah, that sounds yeah. right to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we're saying whatever is at uh position J, mm. um, which is. Yeah, as you said, going to be a number. Uh, where so, where some from amount, the deck are we taking yeah, there? Yeah, some somewhere a bit different. Um, we're taking a card from a different position and putting it in position I, which is the one we've just put in a temporary variable. Mm. And then we put whichever one we put in our temporary variable back in at position J. So we're basically swapping two cards in the deck each time round. Okay. So the first time round, we're swapping the card at position zero and a card that's somewhere else. Mm. The second time round, we're swapping the card at position one and a card from somewhere else. Um, and so each time, so we're going down the deck one card at a time, and each time we're swapping that card with something from somewhere else random in the deck. Um, don't. Why, why are we swapping them? Uh, to shuffle the deck. Okay. So instead of so, if you think about how you shuffle a physical deck. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that would be. Um, you're sort of taking chunks yeah, of cards you and you cut it and then yeah. put them back in. Yeah. But uh, what we're doing here is we're taking the first card and jamming it in somewhere different. We're taking the second card and jamming it in, or taking two cards out and swapping them. Mm. We're taking two cards out and swapping them and working our way and doing the that like for that. the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that was a lot. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot. Yeah, that was hefty first half. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, oh wow, that was the first half, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that's that's uh, fairly complicated. Thing. I I think I grasp it though. Yeah, like even if even if you don't get exactly what's going on, mm. you sort of get the idea of you've got functions. Um, we've yeah. got a for loop. I think I understand the core concepts, even if I don't understand exactly what the maths is or the reasoning behind things. Like I think I've got a grasp on it. But. Yeah, and I, I I didn't want to work out a good way to shuffle a deck myself, which is why uh, we looked up someone else's way Code. that they'd worked out how to do it. Yeah. And we went, yeah, that looks good. Let's use that. <laughs> That's short enough. That shouldn't take half an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so, that's good. I'm glad we did that. Yeah. Um, so we yeah we don't need to worry and it seems to work yeah. we don't need to worry too much about exactly what it's doing it seems to work we get that it's sort of swapping cards around to shuffle yeah and that we can use it again later mm. uh, so now that we've got this shuffle function that someone else very helpfully wrote for us thank you <laughs> um, we can use it so we do s dot shuffle array and then we give it our deck um, and if we copied this line 
and did it again it would mm. shuffle it again okay um and then we yeah so here and then here we'd, we were just printing out the value in deck zero to show so that it actually that it's been shuffled because the first value is it would always be ace of hearts because that's what it is unshuffled yeah okay cool um so we've got shuffling we've got shuffling uh which part would you like to do next so so far we just got our untitled passage where we're putting our deck in um hmm yeah so we've got let's um, go in order see what we needed to do yeah so we we made our deck and we shuffled it uh this first bit that we did next was just links um oh yeah so links are still the same yeah links don't change uh we can get rid of pi and yeah can get rid of that get rid of that um and actually because this whole part is just code we don't need to close we can get rid of these two yeah um but then we're just going to need a semicolon at the end to say that we're it's a separate piece of code yeah yeah so uh and oh and you might notice that we've got a semicolon at the end of each line here um so each each line is doing a separate thing mm. um and it's sort of like how previously we had the round brackets around each separate programming thing we were doing we'd have set yeah. with the round brackets around it and then we'd have if we had another set one that would also have the round brackets around it because they're each their own uh individual part mm. so here we have a semicolon at the end of each line um so we've got this line is very similar to a set line we're saying we're setting the value j equal to something mm. and then we're like okay this is the end of what j equals we're done here that's <laughs> semicolon yeah and we've got okay var temp equals this and then we se semicolon because mm. if we deleted that then javascript wouldn't if we got rid of this semicolon then javascript wouldn't know that this part um that's that looks the same if we got rid of the semicolon it looks the same to javascript as um uh, where's your delete button that looks the same to javascript as if you've got this yeah um so you need the semicolon to say okay we're done with this bit and then we're doing this and we're like okay we're because done with this bit. like the spacing is just aesthetic yeah for the, spacing's, the spacing's to make it easier for us yeah cool um if we if we um if we start looking at python later mm -hmm. Um, then in Python, the white space is important. Okay. Um, so the white space being what, like what you're reading. Yeah, white. Yeah, white space being like this stuff. Just unfortunately, I've got night mode on. <laughs> 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 so. Yeah, uh, yeah. So white white space is um, the the space character, or like uh, yeah, tab yeah. characters. Um, so most programming languages don't care about that. Yeah. Uh, Python does care about that. Uh, in Python, you don't put the semicolon at the end. It knows that e a Python assumes that when you do a new line, it's you a mean that it's a new bit. Yeah. Um, which sort of forces you to, because like with JavaScript, you could sort of jam all this onto one line. You could delete all of the. Yeah. You could have all this be one line of code. And that would be a nightmare. <laughs> it would be horrible to read, but it would still work. Yeah. Um, so part of the reason that Python uses white space instead of things like this is to sort of force it into a readable format okay um so you and the computer are using the same clues to work out um work out what's going on that that's cool i like the idea of like well <laughs> if we if we want to encourage people to make this readable yeah. then what we need to do is make the computer well, how the computer reads as close to how people read as possible that's yeah. cool <laughs> Pro programmers can't be trusted to make something readable to people so, so we'll have to adjust the equipment so then for them so then when they're adjusting to the equipment they're actually adjusting to their fellow human being yeah <laughs> that's fucking <laughs> that fucking rules there's a lot of other things about python that i think in so i got I excited there <laughs> good i'm glad i just realized i just shouted that fucking rules good i think people should shout that fucking rules about programming more often it's just that it's exciting um yeah this is good. good um i think that like there's other things about python that i think encourage you to make it completely unreadable ah. um <laughs> undoing all that good conceptual work yeah there's like know. 
yeah, Python's got some very clever stuff mm. that lets you write very short code for certain things. Mm. And if you're very used to how Python works, it feels quite natural. But if you're new to Python, you look at it and you're like, this line has 50 pieces of punctuation in it and none of it means anything to me. Yeah. Um, so, but we're not, we're not, we're, doing... not, we're not in those words yet. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not looking at Python yet. And also you can, unless you're looking at someone else's code, you can ignore that and just do whatever's readable for you. Um, so we've got, um, what were we doing before I started talking <laughs> about Python? Um, we were checking. Oh, in... we were talking about links. We were talking about how you can, yes. um, about how you can do links. Uh, so we're going to get rid of this printing out. Cause we trust it now. Cause we trust it now. Um, and before we had play, right? Yeah, we had play and credits. Cool. Yeah, so you can put those in. Uh, whoop. Uh, so hopefully if you close that, it'll now... Have them. Yeah, there we there go. There we go. I'm just going to put this over here. Sensible. <laughs> I don't know how sensible it is, but... All right, so what did we have? Yeah, what did we have in play? Oh, this is just like text. Uh, yeah, so you can, can copy this yeah. whole bit. This Boom. this is gonna be the same. This is so easy. I'm a genius. <laughs> Here we go. And then we've got Ooh. all of our new bits. Uh, that's the part that actually matters right now. I can add the text in for those other bits later because they're all just links that I'll be copying and pasting. Great. Uh, this is where we actually wait. Oh, we wrong want, one. Uh, we this want one. No one dies. There we go. Oh yeah, and then we've got this. <laughs> oh yeah, it wasn't even. Oh, so we'll probably we'll, st we'll still want to copy that bit so we can have our link to our next bit. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. There <laughs> <laughs> um, we go. Okay, so this is Harlow. This is Harlow. And we're going to translate this into JavaScript. Yes. Um. So here we've got set face down to an empty array. Yes. Um, and we know that. So let's just copy this line. And then change it. Yeah. Underneath. And let's and let's put it in here. Yeah. Um, so that would be. So how do we how do we tell Twine in this version that what we're doing is code rather than text? Uh, yep. Thanks for reminding me, because <laughs> I never Ooh, would. Not quite. <laughs> not ah, oh, I, I, I didn't hold shift like I thought I did. Uh, mm -hmm. There we go, and not equals because we're not. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then you might want to just stick the closing one. Oh, okay. Oh, just... stick the closing one. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I just like to have my brackets paired up. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, it's yeah. Uh, percentage. Duh. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So whatever we put in between these brackets um, is going to be code rather than just text. Yeah. Um, so we've got our variable that, you've, that we've called face down, and we're going to make it equal to an empty array. Okay. So is it? Do we start off by expanding it from? Yep. Because yep. we want to be able to get back to it later. Yep. Uh, equals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have. I'm trying to remember. I, I know we've seen arrays in this because we've just done the deck. Yeah. I'm just trying. Is it? Isn't it? Would an empty one just be closed brackets with nothing in it? Yeah. Okay. So is it square brackets for yeah. this. There we go. Perfect. And then we want to tell it that this is this is one bit, and we're done with this bit. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so we can uh, delete this set face down to a part at the. Because you're cause useless. We don't need you anymore. Here we go. Um, so if we go back to our other thing, so Oop. the next line is set die to random. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just do the same thing and copy it over. Yeah. Or uh, do you want to just copy this whole part? Yeah, and we'll break it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to suggest if you put it in front of the bit where we're writing our code, and then we can in front uh, ahead of. Oh, okay. That's. Ahead of, so if we, it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's okay. where it is. Um, so this, uh, we can put all of our code just in this inside this same set of um, of brackets. Um, so if you do a new line after the semicolon. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Um, and then we're going to make a... So this time, we're using a temporary variable. Yes, which is just uh, the yeah. equals... Yeah. yeah, so var, and then you give it a name. Oh, uh, die. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to, just because it's sort of a, this is a convention in like how you would name, how you normally name variables. Lowercase? Uh, you'd normally start it off with a lowercase. Um, yeah, and the same with the face, face down. down. Um, yeah, you normally, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> is there a reason for that? Or? Uh, it's just, uh, it's just a convention, basically. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, mo mo there's sort of there's different conventions in different programming languages. Um, but um, most of the ones, uh, yeah, most programming languages don't. You you just don't normally start variable names with capital letters. Okay. But is that like an aesthetic choice or a functionality choice or like a in, in functionality most, out of aesthetic choice? In in most programming languages, it's sort of purely aesthetic. Mm. Um, like if someone else was reading your code, they might find it a bit confusing because most people are used to variables starting with a lowercase name. Yeah. Um, there are some programming languages where whether or not something is capitalized does make a difference. Yeah. Um, the only reason I'm asking you to do it is uh, because I so find I get it, used to it. <laughs> mostly just because I find it visually unappealing. <laughs> because I'm that's how I'm used to it looking. Okay. Uh, this is just purely me being picky, basically. All right, that's fine. Um, you can make me conform to your habits. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this um, isn't something serious. Yeah, so um, we're going to want a random number between one and six. Yes. Uh, and I actually looked this up earlier. Um, so if you do... Um, and we're going to use... So there's some sort of built-in functionality. Okay. Um, that we can get at uh, with the underscore. So if you do underscore dot random and then opening brackets and then the numbers that you want it to be between so yeah like this. yeah perfect uh and then that works the same as um uh as our random macro that we were using before basically this one yeah okay so shall i just delete that now because we've done that yep we've done that line boop boop uh, and then a uh, semicolon at the end. Yes, because we're done with that line. Done with that line. Okay, uh, so now we're going to make a for loop. Yep. Um, and we, we're saying for each i in the range, uh, so for this one, for how this one works, we've got a range of numbers from one to um, die what, value. Die value. Um, and we're moving the first card from deck, uh, in, we're, we're, and we're doing stuff each time round. Um, so we're gonna. Uh, so if we get started on our for loop, mm. uh, so we're gonna have four, um, and then the opening and closing round brackets, and then uh, opening and closing curly braces. Mm -hmm. So the stuff in the round brackets is going to be our sort of set up conditions of how our for loop's going to work. And yep. then the curly braces are going to be the code that, that we do. That gets run. That gets run. Yeah. Um, so basically what's in the square brackets here. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the same as our previous for loop, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start off by creating a temporary va variable called i. Yeah. So just the, oh, the i equals. Yep. And we're going to want to start off at zero. Zero. I think. Uh, or is it? Is semicolon. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then in the next was um, the length. What was it? Is it still length for this? Yeah. So we want to. Well, uh, for this, we're doing. Uh, we want to do something as many times as whatever number we rolled on the die. Yeah. So we want. Would we just put die in here then? Um, so we're going to be increasing the value of i each time. So we're going to keep going until i 
uh, we're going to keep going as long as I is less than whatever we rolled on the die. Okay. So, so you want I is less than. Uh, but is there no space then? Or is so that's greater than. Oh, yeah. Uh, but is there a space or no space? Uh, it doesn't matter if there's a space or no space in this case. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it because that looks nice to me. Cool. That's a good reason to do it. <laughs> um, uh, and then die. Yep. Yeah. And then we want another semicolon to say we're done with that bit of the loop. And yep. then each time around, instead of doing I minus minus, we're mm. going to do I plus plus. Okay. We're just going to add one to I each time. Because it's cumulative. Um, so if we roll if we rolled one on the die, yeah, uh, we'd start off with i equals zero. We'd say i is less than one. We'd do whatever is in the curly braces, and then we'd add one. We'd add one to i, and then it would no longer be less than zero. So we'd stop. I no mean, it'd no longer be less than, be less than one. Yeah. So we'd stop. Yeah. Uh, cool. So if you want to put a new line in uh, between the yeah. curly braces, I yeah. was there, but I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> um, and then yeah, there we go. Perfect. Um, so Should I just get rid of this? Uh, I would uh, keep it for now until we've done the whole for loop. Because okay. I think we'll get confused if we delete part of the for loop. Okay, until cool. Um, so um, I think the easiest way to do this is going to be sort of to translate this as directly into JavaScript as possible. Yeah. To sort of show the equivalence of what we're doing. Yeah, and that, we can probably finish off after that because it's coming up to half past. Oh, it is coming up to half past. Yeah. Um, so this yeah. is a nice, easy call down. <laughs> <laughs> after the after the heavy yeah, we, start, we started like... off at two hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And now we're at ninety. Now we're at a light jog. <laughs> no, we sprinted. We sprinted. Now we're at a light jog. Just all about warming down, bringing your cardio yeah, back yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um. So, uh, the the JavaScript equivalent of move dex first into temp, um, is gonna be um. Is gonna be. Uh, I wrote this down somewhere so that I would was be able to... Was it the to... pop thing, or was it... Yes, it's... It was on that page you just clicked out of. Oh, was it? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we go. Um, so you're going to want var temp. Var temp. And I'm uh, going to ask you to um, put some spaces in front of it. I'm going to ask you to put four spaces in front. There we go. So now it's nicely indented and it's a bit more visually obvious that this is part of the loop. Cool. Uh, and then we're going to want temp equal to... Um, uh, <laughs> that was a joke. That was a visual joke I did. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> you said equal to. So I wrote oh. equals to. <laughs> you deleted it too quickly for me to see. I was ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, equal to s dot face down dot pop dot pop and then we're going to want opening and closing brackets uh, because pop is another function and it's a function that you don't give any variables to which you is why you, you just yeah you don't need to give it you don't need to tell it anything but um, pop is something that you can only do to an array okay so we're saying um, we're basically we're saying we know face down is an array mm. and one of the things you can do to an array is pop um, you can pop that array you can pop that array uh and pop uh pop is quite similar to move mm -hmm. um but you don't need to specify that it's the first uh yeah. pop just takes whatever value is first uh and uh, assigns it and, and returns it so you could you could do print s dot face down dot pop mm. and that would remove the first value from the array and print it um, oh so Printing removes it from the array. Popping removes it from the array. Okay. Um, so if we got rid of temp and we just did, so if we deleted temp, I'm not going to do it because then you'll just have to type it again. Yeah. Um, but if we just did s dot face down dot pop four times, for example, it would just delete the first four values from the array. Um, but we want to keep them somewhere else, which is why yeah. we're assigning it to the temporary variable. Sounds good. Uh, so that's the end of that line. Okay. We're we're popping a value from the array and we're putting it in our temporary variable. Nice. Um, and what do we put at the end of a line uh, to tell? Co yep, semicolon. Yep, perfect. Um, so now we're doing this line here. Uh, so we've got our face down, um, and we want to add whatever's in the temporary variable to it. Mm. And, and this was where we first started running into issues with Harlow. Yeah, this is this is where we'd already at this point we'd already started getting past what Harlow wants to let you do easily. Yeah. Um. So we had to do 
we had to set face down to whatever was already there and then we had to put temp into another array and add those two arrays together. Mm. Uh, there's a much nicer way to do that in JavaScript, um, which is uh, called push. So um, we're going to... Oh, hang on. Uh, we're not popping from face down. Ooh, we're, we're not popping. We're, we're popping pop from deck we're into face deck. down. Silly. Yep. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, so here. And then we're going to... And I'm going to point out that this is lowercase, whereas we'd given it a uppercase before, but I'm ah. going to suggest that you leave that as lowercase and we go back and change, change the, the other one. one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so then on this next line, um, do you want to... So we've got um, the value that we popped in our temp variable. Yeah. So um, now do you push... So, yes, yeah, so we're going to do s dot face down. S dot face down. Because we're using, we're using another... Uh, so rather than setting equal... Um, we don't need to do so we could do s dot face down equals s dot face down plus whatever um, or you can just say plus and it'll know that you want to add it uh, but what we're going to do is call another array function mm. so we're doing s dot face down dot push dot push so the same as the same as we can say uh, we know deck is an array and we want to pop something from it mm. we can say face down is we know face down is an array and we're going to push something to it is that right? That's perfect. And okay. we're going to push the temporary variable. And push will uh, take whatever is in the temporary variable and stick it on the end of our face down array. Okay. Um, which I, th I think this line here, s dot face down dot push temp, mm. uh, looks a lot nicer than set face down to face down plus yeah. temporary. Yeah, I get that. Um, so we don't these, yeah, so these first three lines that was our old for loop we're done with those now Boop. and we've replaced those with this new for loop yes um and we could uh, i don't do we need the do we need i don't think we need this print do we because that's just what we were doing to check it worked yeah and we never got rid of it um well do we want to, do we want to check that this has worked okay yeah sorry yeah we haven't um, done that yet have we so uh yeah it was that uh, so the the line that your cursor's on at the moment mm -hmm. is still inside oh, the for yeah. loop. So we're going to want there yeah we out. So we're outside the for loop, but we're, we're still, still in, the, in code. the code area. Um, and then uh, print is going to be very similar. Um, it's just the word print and then brackets around whatever we want to print. Cool. So print. Uh, and then s, s dot start, down. Yeah. And then closing brackets, and then and then semicolon. Yeah. Boop. And then uh, if we want, if you also want to say you have uh, die cards face down, um, um, shall we use the the other way with the equals? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I can outside just type in outside of the coding area because it's not code. Yeah. So oh, I guess we can yeah, just do it here just, and just change. So instead the, of having yeah. this, we're gonna do. Um, uh da 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 and then or do oh, and yeah. then close it. Yeah. Uh and that's just percent and Yeah. Is that right? So yeah, that looks right to me. So shall we see if this works now? Okay, yeah, let's try. Um and then we can close off. Play. Mm -hmm. This one. Uh huh. This one. Uh oh. Uh -oh. S dot oh because we didn't actually go back and change it oh, to a case. Oh yeah, lowercase. we forgot to do that. So that's in. That's in our very first. Yep. Stage, isn't it? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Deck. Try again. So. Array is under in undefined using template. Okay, so it's saying. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, so if we go back to our first passage, because that's the one where we're having the problem. If we scroll down to the end, um, function array. Oh. So yeah. Again, we've got the. Ah. Yeah. So when it's saying that something is undefined, that normally means that you're trying to refer to something that doesn't actually exist. Yeah. Um. 
basically just telling us there's still a change that needs to be made. Yeah, it is. It's saying, um, well, you told me to you told me to use this thing, but you didn't define what it means. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So this seems to be working. Yes. You've got five cards face down. It printed out our face down cards, yep. and there's. So we've got the ten of spades, the two of spades, the ten of clubs, the jack of hearts, and the nine of hearts. Yeah. And then we haven't put anything in this passage yet. Ah, yeah. But, but it works. Yeah. So we've done it. We've, yeah. tra- we've officially translated most of the things we did in Harlow over to uh, Snowman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that that's JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript. Yeah. Snow- so Snow- Snowman is the um, is the story format. We were previously using Harlow, and now we're using Snowman. Uh, a minimal story format for authors more experienced with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and and this code that we've been writing is like this is proper JavaScript code, mm. um, and you could run. There's other places that this will run outside Twine. Yeah. Um, and this is this is like this is just this is just actual programming that you're doing now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're fully you're fully just programming. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So I think. Um, I'm a programmer now. You're a programmer now. So soon into the series, I'm already a programmer. <laughs> what are we gonna do? I don't know. Our premise is dead. (laughs) (laughs) You're already too good at programming. I'm I'm gonna have to replace you. Yeah. (laughs) I'm getting kicked off. I'll get get one of the cats next time. Oh, I'm out of a job again. (laughs) Um. So I think before next time, probably you'll paste a bunch of the text that we'd already got sorted and, um sort of some of the some of the less interesting bits and then uh hopefully next time we can start looking at the part where we got stuck before yes um sounds good and uh we can look at how to how to start doing the more complicated parts of the implementation sounds good can't wait okay all right uh, thanks, thanks for everyone for watching us. um if you're watching on twitch you can also uh, see these videos on the YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, and if which, you're watching these on YouTube, <laughs> if you're watching you're these on YouTube, you <laughs> can also find these videos on the Twitch channel. Uh, the uh, easiest way to find the one of those that you're not currently looking at is probably via the Twitter account, um, which I will, which I definitely remember the name of, and I will tell you that name once I have remembered it. But while which is, you're remembering <laughs> which it. Which is uh, at, at adventure underscore codes. Yes. Uh, is the Twitter account. And if you've got questions about any of the stuff that we've talked about, uh, you can tweet at us there. Um, mm-hmm. And we can try and help. Um, well, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> AJ hates helping. I hate helping people. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just not good yet. But um, we'll, we'll get there. You can subscribe on Twitch for mm-hmm. notifications when we're live. You can subscribe, subscribe on, on YouTube, YouTube for, uh, for archive. For archive. What? What uh, do people call them? <laughs> what, whatever people call Videos. them. Videos. <laughs> uh, you can like our videos to make me happy. That'll be that'll be nice. That'll be nice to see Darcy smile. I and don't, like, I don't, oh, someone liked the video. That'll I be don't nice. know if you get anything from liking the videos, but I don't know if we get anything from, except for it making you happy. Except, but that's you know that's worth something, good. isn't it? Um, and uh, yeah, we're planning, uh, or I'm planning. Um, <laughs> I'm morally supporting. <laughs> uh, to start putting up uh, some shorter more concise videos explaining sort of basic computing stuff uh up on the youtube channel so if you subscribe on youtube you'll see those when we start putting those up and i'll also be tweeting those on the twitter account which is adventure underscore codes hell yeah uh thank you for watching thank you for watching uh see you soon see you soon Bye. bye